Sure. Are you looking at market size, market share, competition? I, I, I am. Um, so I'm looking at it from, you know, Maiden is a premium brand, premium pricing. I am looking at overall category, but what I'm really focused in on is what our, our space is, like what our, our available and obtainable market is based on our price point. We, you know, we're, we sell $100 plus frying pans. We're probably not going to appeal to the person that that needs a $15 frying pan. Like that's a totally different market. I get it. But we're kind of in this fortunate space where cookware is both a need-based product and a want-based. So everyone needs cookware, right? Like you need to cook. Uh, but we have a high percentage of people that need cookware that want high quality cookware. Um, a lot of other categories, especially commodity commodity items, that need based percentage is way higher than the want based percentage. Um, so that's where you know, as a premium brand offering premium product, we can really uh, succeed and take over quite a bit of the market. Right. And how do you actually determine though, like what that market size is? Like let's say Crocker is a $60 million a year category. That's probably like an underestimate, but let's say $60 million a year on Amazon. How do you know what percent of that is premium cookware? So there's a lot of different tools out there I'm sure you're familiar with that where you can see kind of revenue by SKU and kind of revenue for the category. I'm looking at price point. I'm looking at material. I'm looking at features. So if, let's just say, I don't know, cookware is a $100 million category. Your actual niche is going to be typically a percentage of a percentage of a percentage. You know, only a certain percent of that's going to be stainless. You know, a certain percent of that stainless is going to be a certain size. A certain percent of that size and stainless is going to have different features. So you might start at 100 million, but by the time you narrow it down, the total market might be 5 to 10 million. And then, of course, it's either going to be consolidated or fragmented with different competitors. And then you got to come up with a percentage that's realistic of what you can actually steal from competitors or gain. All right. That makes sense. So are you just looking at the top ASINs, like for the word like steel frying pan, and assuming those make up a certain percentage of sales, kind of like the 80-20 rule? And you, like, I guess, guess the market size based on that, or how does that actually work? Yeah, so a little bit of both. So if you're looking at like a cookware category, there are going to be top keywords, um, you know, like cookware set, frying pan, et cetera. But there's also a lot of branded demand that's raising the overall category that you have to take into consideration. So if someone's a fan of a particular brand and that brand maybe has 25% of that market, the percentage you can actually obtain from their branded search terms that's raising the overall market is going to be way less than a generic non-branded search term. Right. So keeping that in mind, how do you determine what percent of the market you can actually, I guess, acquire? <laughs> so uh, I can't go into some of that's proprietary. I can't go into exact details, but generally, um, if it's a fragmented market, let's say there's five top competitors, you can generally get into that same percentage range that they have if you're offering the right product at the right price with the right quality.